shotgun blast of amazing content. All right, so we're talking about creating confidence. So I'm gonna send it over to Chad, our chief confidence officer, and see what kind of amazing notes he had written down today. Well, hey, hey, good to see you. Good to see you, Joel. So of course, I'm sure everyone had to write down that fear is a green light that means go. Like that doesn't get much clearer than that. Whereas most people think, oh, fear is a red light that means stop. No. So that's ship, flipping the script on that one for sure. Uh, I like when they said, talk, talk to yourself in the same positive way you talk to others. Like we all know that we should be, you know, there's power of life and death in the tongue, right? That's, I think we would all agree to that. So we know we need to be speaking into others, planting seeds, um, things that are going to grow, things that are healthy, things that are beautiful, things that are good. And so it just makes sense that we have to speak to ourselves in the same way because we actually can build ourselves up. We can talk ourselves into anything and we can talk ourselves out of anything. And it's just what we're thinking and what we're saying and that those things are so, so, so important. And so I always love, Pam Souter always says when she's talking to someone that's kind of in a funk or they're frustrated, she says, just take the next three days and journal all your thoughts. So you can just take a realistic inventory. I call it doing a checkup from the neck up, right? And you're just taking a realistic inventory of where you are, what you're thinking about, because that will make all the difference. And we can take every thought captive and we can create new thoughts. And there's so much science behind that where even creating a new thought creates a new neuro pathway. And I'm not a neuro pathway expert at all. But hey, if I can create good neuro pathways that are new and positive, then I want to create all kinds of them things. I want to be like a spider web of neuro pathways. So that's huge. Find a community. This is this is big too. Find a community to be a part of. Um, she said, successful people don't worry about the how. And I love that. Successful people don't analyze until they're paralyzed. They just go, man, I think I'm going to go for it. And what I love about it is if when you jump in something, you're all in, you either find out very quickly that that was the wrong path and you're on to the next thing or it works out, right? But better to just jump in 10 things to find the one than to take 10 years for every one and you never get to the one that you're, you're intended to get to, right? So I think that's so important just to figure it out. I mean, that's one of my favorite sayings is we'll figure it out. You know, hey, I got an idea, man, that's that sounds great. That sounds wonderful. I mean, and you know, to a certain extent, you have to do a little bit of research. Like you don't want to jump into buying family videos right now, probably, or Blockbuster. Well, I think Blockbuster's around. That'd be a bad time. Bad time to do that right now, right? Or, you know, um, different types of machines that are like extinct. Not a good time to buy, uh, you know, like tape cassette players to sell kind of thing. Anyway. Um, learn from others who are further than you. You know, we've been saying for eight years now, it's okay to be a copycat if you copy the right cat. Because if you'll do, if you, if you find someone that has a certain thing and you want that thing, if you'll do what they did to get that thing, then you too can have that thing. So learn from others who are farther than you. When you buy into someone's opinion, you buy into their lifestyle. So think about that. Think about, you know, in this, this, in this industry, uh, we are going to encounter negative people that have strong opinions about what we do in network marketing. But remember, if you buy into their, if you're going to buy into their opinion, look at their life because a lot of times you'll go, I don't want that life. And if you don't want that life, then don't take their advice very seriously. Okay. If someone's been divorced four times and they're giving you marriage tips, probably don't want to take them. Maybe, maybe take them from, a, I, I'm not going to do what you're saying right now because <laughs> you've messed it all up and you figured out how to mess it up really bad. So I'm just not going to do what you're telling me. And I'm going to learn that way, what not to do instead of what to do kind of thing. And the last one here, and I love this, and this is one of the most important things. And I know John Maxwell says this all the time. And we need to be saying this all the time. Who do you know? Who do you know that I need to know? right? Who do you know? And then when she's talking about referrals, and I love this phrase, it would mean the world to me. You know, if you tell someone it would mean the world to me to, to give me 
three referrals of people who you know. Who are the three people that you know that just love coffee? Like coffee's their whole life. They wake up in the morning, they have like 16 cups of coffee every day. You know, who, who are the three people that you know that I need to know that I can talk to about coffee? Who are the three most stressed people in your life that you know that I could talk to about helping them out with a product that we have called Confianza, right? Who are three people? And, and then you just get people in. And if you say it would mean the world to me, man, most people are like, I'll help you out. If it would mean the world to you, sure, I'll give you a few names. Why not, right? So referrals are huge and just ask. You know, it's just that I got this book over here. Here it is. It's called, I haven't dug into it yet, but it's Mark Victor Hansen, the chicken soup or the chicken soup for the soul guy. And it's just ask. We got to ask. We're, we're in the business of asking. The more you ask, the more yeses you get. So that's all I got, Joel. I love that. Uh, we say that all the time. You got to be an asshole. Why not? Right. The more you ask, the more you receive. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. So awesome stuff, Chad. Let's go ahead and throw it down to Tay. See what kind of awesome stuff Tay has because I know he's got it lined up for us. You can see it. He's chomping at the bit to get at it. Yeah, she was, man, she was a shotgun just spitting out so much good things. Uh, and I like it because she was spitting out just the good, but she was also kind of telling her story and uh, telling where the good came from. And it came from, obviously, her being desperate and just struggling because she lost something that she was uh, was so routine and consistent in her life. Uh, so the first thing that she said that really stuck out to me, she said, uh, show up as the real you. And then she said, claim your shame. Uh, and I love that because it made me think of uh, – Chad's wife, Jerry, who always uh, say uh, God will turn your mess into his, into his message. Uh, and for me, it's about just owning where you are and understanding like your story is going to impact people in a way that's going to allow them to see that there is hope, uh, there is change, but we have to be a part of that process and we have to let that process uh, wear itself out. And you have to just embrace that journey that you're on, knowing that, you know, the things that you're going through is only making you stronger. It's only making you wiser and it's only making you more confident in yourself. And it's also growing your faith at the same time. So I really love that she touched on that. Uh, the second thing that she said that really stuck out to me, is she said, don't put your self-worth in your job title. Uh, and I love that. And it was one quote that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, and it's similar to that. Um, let me, let me get it quick. And it says, uh, and basically it says, it says, learn how to keep your feelings and your self-worth in different places, because when your feelings get hurt, it shouldn't change how you view yourself. Uh, and I love that thinking about her job, uh, when she lost her job, she lost view of herself because, uh, confidence, everything is placed in that job. Uh, and when you do that, you have to understand your job may change. Uh, but if your job changed, that shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't change how you view yourself. So I love that. And I love how she worded it because it, it like Chad said, like the, uh, the um, take inventory, like it calls her to take inventory. It calls her to look within so that she can get that, uh, that confidence in herself. And, and I love when she said, man, I love what she said. She took herself uh, and she removed the lanes. Uh, and I love that because it opened her up to so much and it showed her so much potential that she had. And it steered her in a direction that put her in the face of, people that wasn't going to just hold her hostage to this one particular field. They was going to bring out more in her and just open her eyes to the, like so much more that she could do. So I love that. Uh, the third thing that uh, she talked about, and, I, and it kind of goes along with that when she said, uh, action leads to confidence. Uh, when she lost her job, the first thing that she, she started doing was start taking steps. Uh, she didn't do some big extravagant thing. Like she got on social media and said, I need help. Like that's an action step. She could have just stayed in her, in, in her house uh, with a bucket of ice cream and just felt sorry for herself, but she did. She actually did the simplest thing. Just put it out on, on uh, social media. I need help. And that led to one thing. And she took a step and it led to another. And she took a step. So it was a part of that process of her growing and her developing that within herself. And one thing that I put down here is one thing that I always kind of, when I feel like I'm stuck, when I feel like I'm in a rut or whatever the case may be, is this one quote and it's simple. And it says, action is the cure to all, action is the cure to all fear. Like if you're scared to do something, if you take action, you're gonna forget about all the reasons why you can't do it. And you're gonna focus on the one thing that you can do in that moment that's taking that next step. Uh, and then the last thing, hey baby. And the last thing that she said that, that uh, really just kind of stuck out to me, she said, uh, don't be your own worst enemy. Uh, and that's probably one of my favorite because I think we, uh, many times we, that's the case for all of us kind of getting our own way. And uh, I love quotes. Uh, and this one, just I posted probably maybe yesterday or two days ago. Uh, and it said, you are not your thoughts. 
you are the one listening to them. Uh, and I love that. Just think about how often we just sit and listen to the, the replay that's going on in our head. And for me, I think about what Chad, he said, if you don't like the station, change it. If you don't like the thoughts that you're thinking, change it. You're the one who's sitting there taking action on things that probably don't even matter, things that probably don't even exist. So we create these scenarios, we create these circumstances that wouldn't exist until we start listening to these and start putting it on ourselves. So uh, that really stuck out to me. And uh, just, um, she said, uh, and this is the last thing I wanted to share. She said, isolation brings out the inner critic. So if you feel like, like you're isolating yourself, then you need to get into the community. If you have people on your team that hosting these Zooms, if they help they just these work time Zooms, like get on those Zooms. You don't have to get on and say or do anything besides just get on there, be in the community so that you can work, be on there where you're having people sharing the things that's working and also just sharing positive uh, stories and just positive things that's going on. And I think just, just that's just part of being in a community that's going to continue to lift you up and not make you feel like you have to work this business by yourself and you can just be surrounded by people who are going after the same things that you're going after. So uh, this one was really good. And uh, uh, thanks for sharing this one, Joe. Absolutely. Man. All right. So let's see, where am I at? I'm on, uh, let's see. The one that she started out with was struggling with influence isn't because of anything other than most people have a lack of confidence. That was what they attribute it to. Um, so how do we create confidence? Well, she said, confidence starts with gratitude. So waking up with gratitude will help as the foundation for building confidence and then showing up as the real you. It's hard to have confidence when you're hiding behind something that really isn't you. And then having to step into your scary places. You know, most people create a self-made closet and they stay there. So what you need to do is you need to step into those places that allow you to build your confidence. You know, she said, the one thing that you should constantly say to yourself is what is the worst thing that can happen? What is the worst thing that can happen? You know, uh, to create uh, that one moment in your mind to see how bad it can be. And then you have to take my friend, uh, Mr. Chow's advice and say, but did you die? Really? Is it that bad that you're going to die? No then you should be able to step out and overcome it and watch what that does for your life. I love what she said about the speed to market. Guys, when it comes to your business or helping a new person join your business, the speed to launching them is critical. If you can help them get their message out there, get their statement out there, get their first post out there, get their knowledge built up quickly, that gives them a higher percentage chance of success than somebody that takes a week to two weeks to get started. So when somebody joins your team, the first thing that you should be doing is helping them craft their first post to post within that first four hours of you helping them join your team. I like what she said about epic fail moments. Your epic fail moments will also lead to the I'm proud of me moments because you can't have the I'm proud of me moments without having to go over some kind of adversity. Um, then she starts talking about social media. I love this. It's your job as a good human to put your thoughts out there on social media to inspire others so that they can be uplifted or learn from you. As that's all you should be using social media for. Man, if you look at the temperature of where social media is at right now, if you could be the shining light in your circle of influence, that will cause people to draw to you. Going back to the having lack of confidence is why people struggle with having influence. Well, with social media, if you put out the positive, you will draw people to you right now. Then the next thing they said is, you know, borrowing confidence is the next most important thing to having your own confidence. Guys, with our business, with It Works, that's exactly what we teach people to do. 
you know, with us and with you, lend your confidence to somebody until they're on their own feet and they have their own confidence in what they're doing. So have them lean on you, have them lean on success stories that enable them to be propped up until they have the level of success that they're looking for. And then that creates the confidence. So we are confidence lenders and hope dealers. I love firing the villains in your life. It's really easy, you know, you see those posts at least once a week. I'm reorganizing my friends you know, because people are going through and going, man, I don't need to see all these negative posts popping up in my timeline. And they seem to be coming from the same groups of people all the time. So if there's a villain in your life that's constantly battling you and you're having to go through that, just go ahead and hit the unfriend or unfollow and it will clear up and you'll have more positivity coming through your life. Um, I like the, the thought process of, taking your phone and creating four times a day where an alarm alarm goes off that just reminds you to say positive things to yourself, whether it's an affirmation or it's reminding yourself of a past win that you had. So like Chad was saying, by doing those types of things, you're creating new neural pathways of positivity in your brain. And when you start doing that, you start seeing the good more often than not. I love this. You don't have to know how. And then she said, it's almost like she was shouting after it. You don't need to know how. Figure it out. The figure it outers are the ones that are the top 3% because of the fact that they're not waiting for somebody to figure it out for them. They're just plowing ahead trying to figure it out. Uh, I love the conversation with Gary Vee when they said, you know, how do you learn to do all this? And he said, there's no other time in history where we have access, free access to knowledge and information. It's a site called Google. It's a site called YouTube. All you have to do to learn something is type what it is you want to learn into one of those two things and you will have endless amounts of information. So if information and knowledge was actually power, we have unlimited power available to us right now. No, it's the people that choose to figure it out. So if you're trying to figure something out, just go look for it, search for it, and you'll find it now. Finally, talking about imposter syndrome. Guys, I'll be the first to tell you, I struggle with imposter syndrome all the time. And the reason why is because when you are a leader and I know Chad and Tay probably feel the exact same way. You're going in uncharted territory. So you're going into territory with the knowledge that you currently have, but you don't have the knowledge of where you're going. So for a lot of us, this is the first time we're going somewhere. So we're trying to look all confident like, hey, I know what I'm doing, when in reality, we're just trying to figure it out along the way. But the great thing about the figure it outers are they're the ones that create the path for everybody else to follow along. So when it came to imposter syndrome, they said, no one is qualified. They just do it. And the people that are leaders and the people that are, are out there paving the way, they're just normal people like you and me. Like she said, uh, Michelle Obama was sitting there as the first lady at a table full of important people. And she had the epiphany that, hey, they're all just normal people. Remember that you are a normal person, just like the person you're trying to emulate and be like. So guess what that means? If they can do it, you can do it too. And then the final thing that I'll, I'll kind of go off here, which this was, this was huge. You know, the fear is my green light. Run into fear. But the question that you need to really ask yourself when it comes to why you aren't getting the success that you want, if you're looking for success and you're working hard and you're not attaining it, the question you need to ask yourself is what is really stopping me? You know, 
normally it's surface level, like, well, I can't get anybody to say yes. Like, nope. Okay, well, you're taking somebody else's response and pushing that off as your reason why. Well, maybe it's because you need to get better in order for people to join you. So need to do a deep dive and find out what's really stopping you. And once you find out what that is, it will give you the confidence to overcome it. So guys, thanks for jumping on today. Hopefully you learned a lot. I know we learned a lot and got tons of notes from this. Can't wait to see you here again next time. Go out and make it an awesome day.